Hatchapi Loop, written and read by Damien Michael Wagner. This is based on a song for train enthusiasts, the story of one of the greatest feats of train engineering in California, the Tehachapi Loop. Not long of a drive out of the city, a favorite destination for stargazing is a nice camping spot named Bright Lake. From there, I can wake up at dawn, take a short drive and a short hike up the hillside to a viewpoint across from the Tehachapi Loop. Overlooking the Tehachapi Pass from this viewpoint, the foreground is obstructed by a massive mound of dirt, looking like the biggest anthill you've ever seen. The hill is topped by a tiny white cross, and its base skirted by two sets of tracks the trains will eventually circle. Let me tell you, when a pair of these trains meet up, coiled around that mound like a couple of snakes passing as close as they possibly can, just flirting, no touching, you can feel in your chest the magnificent deafening roar of metal on metal, the might of the engines, and the threatening horn sounding off. That is some pure power. Considered an engineering masterpiece by civil engineer William Hood of the Southern Pacific Railway Company, this marvelously monstrous display of the human spirit's sheer will to be the strongest beast in the forest was built between 1874 and 1876. An incredibly steep incline, or decline as it were, for such a tremendous weight, with an average grade of 2.2% for 28 miles, something had to be done. The world needs Bakersfield oranges. A plaque at the front lookout claims it as one of the seven wonders of the railway world. Now I might need to write six more songs as I hunt for the remainder. Running through the center of the Tehachapi Pass, the tracks wind through solid and decomposed granite, built by as many as 3,000 Chinese indentured laborers using picks, shovels, horse-drawn carts, and blasting powder. This massive undertaking was completed, remarkably, in less than two years under the leadership of civil engineer J.B. Harris. The train line is essentially unchanged since it was built. A decade and a half after its completion, it is still in constant use by an average of 36 trains every day of the week. The loop allows a distribution of the train's weight as it either comes up or down the pass between Bakersfield and Mojave. If you are ever in need to pull something heavy, try adding a pulley in the mix, and your task might get a lot easier. Before Union Pacific took over the line in 1971, you could actually ride a passenger train through the beautiful Tehachapi Pass and around the loop. The town of Tehachapi, up above the loop, was established in 1860, but nearly fell to the ground almost 100 years later. The town was built at nearly the center of the triple junction of some of the most infamous fault lines in California. One, ominously named the White Wolf Fault, there is also the Garlock Fault, and none other than the San Andreas Fault. In 1952, the White Wolf Fault had a terrible rumble that didn't give most people a chance to wake up at 5 in the morning. Taking 11 souls, this massive jolt to Southern California was not only the largest of its time, peaking at 7.3 on the moment magnitude scale. But the resounding waves continued to produce aftershocks that rocked and wreaked havoc for nearly six months after. Four of these aftershocks registered more than five on the moment magnitude scale. If ever you are near Bakersfield or Mojave, you will not be disappointed if you had a side trip because the loop is a must see, feel, and hear and the gorgeous country road to get you there will help you dream your days away. Mm -hmm.